Right, first of all, I'd like to apologise for my lack of videos. It's because I've just not been buying knives. And I've not been buying knives because all my money has been going to my woodworking hobby. I've just been buying woodworking machines and vintage hand tools. I think I, I saved up most of the summer to buy myself a wood lathe. And then from the summer to winter, I saved up to buy a new table saw. And I've just been buying various vintage chisels and planes. In fact, I just got this today, a vintage 3 8 mortise chisel that I'll have to clean up at some point and put a nice edge on. Anyway, all that aside, so here presented to you on a marvellous piece of spotted elm, we have a Rough Rider. Not just any Rough Rider, this is a Rough Rider Reserve. This, to my understanding, is a new line from Rough Rider of much higher quality knives. Rough Rider is known for making cheaper knives in China, but by no means bad knives. They're, they're good for the money. They're not expensive, but they're definitely good for the money. Obviously, the fit and finish usually isn't great, but with this, that's a whole nother story. Now, from what I've heard and what I've read on the little bit of research I have done on Rough Rider reserves is they're doing it in batches. So they'll make a knife for a while, and they're not limited... They're not a limited edition, but once they stop making them, they stop making them. So I guess they'll probably make them for a year or a couple of years or maybe in a couple of months. And then they'll just decide, right, we're ceasing production. That's it. And when I read that, I realised I have to have this now. Because I really like the design. I think I've seen a couple from GEC, but those knives aren't really available in the UK. And, and I don't really feel like importing them from America because I don't really want to have problems with border stuff or any of that nonsense i can't be i can't be bothered with any of that crap and i don't really feel like having my knife held at ransom by a uk border force or whatever nonsense so i tend not to do that um i am aware that there's mike's knives but it's a bit of a pain in the ass to use that website i don't really like the idea of emailing someone to inquire about a knife i want to just put it in the basket and buy it anyway all that crap aside, let's just talk about the knife. Now, I usually don't do unboxings. This is different because it's more than just an unboxing. But I cheated a little bit. Obviously, I already opened the knife to have a little play about with it. And I put it all back in the box. And for some reason, opening this box is a pain in the ass. So the knife actually isn't in the box. It's in the tin. Now, what you also get in the tin, when you open up the tin, you'll be presented with this polishing cloth, which I suppose is actually quite nice, so you can clean off your knife. Once you open that off, you'll be greeted with wax paper, and I really do like it when knives come in wax paper. I don't know why, I just like it. Kind of strange, I suppose. But, um, yeah, I've got the knife just in here, because undoing that, um, and putting it all back together every time I screw up making this video is honestly getting on my nerves I've done this about 10 times now so hopefully this video will get it right so there we are there's the knife the Rough Rider one arm reserve now this is a lovely little knife now the price of these just under £50 of Heidi Haynes when I saw it I had to have it I, I phoned up my, my brother pretty much immediately because I've, I've got no money at the moment and I asked if he would order it for me Thankfully he agreed. Um, so because of that, I've got this fantastic little knife. Um, and I, I just wasn't willing to miss out on this one. There's that many knives that I've missed out on. This wasn't going to be one of them. It is just, it's not perfect. It's not the most practical knife. It's definitely not going to be my go-to EDC. I probably might carry it once or twice and I probably put it away forever. Because, I mean, I've got hundreds of knives at this point. I, I mean, you can say, use your shit. Let's be realistic here. I don't need to carry a different knife every day. I've got a handful of knives that I do like to I do like to carry regularly, but this isn't going to be one of them. This will be a, a shelf queen, so to speak. Um, so anyway, let's just have another look at the knife. So, staring you right there in the face is that absolutely lovely blue denim micarta which really just looks like your jeans just looks like your standard levi's which is actually quite nice you have that shield there the arrow 
um, that you see on quite a few traditional knives. You've got these lovely bolsters that look almost perfect actually and I think that there's called a thread or something. I'm sorry I'm not too well versed on traditional knife terminology. Um, we do have a bit of a, a swedge there on the top of the knife which I suppose is a bit of an unusual feature for such a knife especially as that isn't sharp at all. There's th This knife does have a tip you'll see it in just a minute but it seems a bit weird for it to have a swedge. In fact, you can see it there, the blade's kind of thick from here to here, then it narrows and it obviously at the tip is its narrowest point. It does look quite nice. I suppose it must be just for looks because it's got no practical function at all, at least on a clip point, that'll make it easier to pierce. The construction, as you can see, we've got two pins. We've also got a brass lanyard tube, or lanyard hole there. I can't imagine you'd want to put a piece of paracord through this style of knife, but a little piece of leather might be a nice touch. Maybe I'll do that. And it's well machined, so you can't actually see the, the pivot pin. That's not a bad thing. Uh, we've got brass liners there, as well as... Well, as well as nothing. What am I talking about? But yeah, you've got brass liners, which is... I mean, you can feel it a little bit. It looks almost... The, the vast majority of the knife looks almost seamless. From here to here, at least, I could see I could see a little bit of the seam there. I don't think the camera's picking it up. Look, it's £50 as main china. I, for what you pay for it, this is absolutely excellent. I've got no complaints about it whatsoever. Anyway, the name of the knife, the one arm Razor. And that's because of this little feature here, the, 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 the cut out at the front. A very, very unusual style of blade. I suppose it does look a little tiny bit like a cutthroat razor or a shivet, whatever you want to call it. But I believe the function of that little cut out at the front is so you could hold the knife essentially like this and use that little cut out on the pocket of your jeans or on your belt or your belt loop to open the knife. This, I believe, is pre... Um, pre-thumb stud, pre-thumb hole. I've not really done any research at all on this style of knife. If anyone wants to let me know in the comments, correct me, please feel free to do so. I like doing this because I actually learn a lot from your comments. I think this is probably a design from 18 or, 18 or 1900s, the, the late 1800s or the early 1900s. Feel free to correct me and I, I sort of thought about it, I assume the reason for this design is, well, as the name implies, one arm. You know, that sort of time period, you just had the American Civil War not too long before. Um, you've had the Industrial Revolution, where there's a lot of new machines. Health and safety is just not a thing. You've got machines without guards, so you can easily get your hand chopped off or crushed. So you'd have a lot of people with only one arm. That's just my assumption. I could be wrong. Feel free to correct me. Um, so essentially, this is a knife for a disabled person, which I suppose that's actually quite thoughtful. Especially for back then. I will just say one thing about modern knives and this one hand opening and fast hand opening nonsense. I'm sad to say, and I'm sure a lot of you will know this as well, knives are often associated with crime and people will say to you, why do you need a, a knife you can open with one hand, or why do you need a knife that can open, you can open fast? Well, there's a lot of disabled people out there. There's a lot of people that don't have good use of both hands. Hell, maybe you're one of them. Maybe you maybe you can't open your knife with both hands. It's I mean the year's 2021. We want to be inclusive, don't we? I would hate for someone to not be able to use a knife for something as simple as that, when when they should when they should be able to. I mean something like this seems like the answer to that to that if you ask me I for one would be well I wouldn't be best happy if I couldn't use my knives I'll just say that this, this really is a really nice knife it's quite long it's not very big in the hand like it doesn't take up a lot of room in the hand um, plenty plenty room for me to hold on to my pinky seems to and I really should know the name of that part that little cut out, whatever you want to call it, pinch grip. My pinky seems to fall in there quite nicely, so there'll be plenty of grip on the knife. 
and you've got the Rough Rider Reserve logo there um, and it says Rough Rider underneath it and there we've just got RR001D2 China so it is in D2 steel and as I said it is unfortunately made in China but you get what you pay for 001 I wonder could this be the first one if anyone else has one of these knives please let me know what, what it says if it's the same number maybe that's just a model number It'd be interesting if that was a serial number. Imagine me having the first one. I very, very, very much doubt it. That would be cool though. I love this knife. It's really, it really is beautiful. Um, I actually had a little plan. Maybe I'll do this, maybe I won't. I recently ordered some beechwood from a local sawmill. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm thinking maybe I'll make a, a two or three tier shelf. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. Um... But I'm thinking I'll make it and I'll just I'll put it above my couch and just keep knives like this on. Because I do have a nice little collection of knives now and most of them I just keep in a red mechanics toolbox by the side of my couch because I have to be near my knives because I like being near my knives. Besides, knives are fun to fiddle with while I'm waiting on a loading screen to play Xbox or something like that. Um so maybe maybe I'll do that. I don't really have much more else to say on this knife but I will also say at the same time I also bought this. This is also made by Rough Rider, it's just a little leather slip also from Heine Haynes. This one costs just under £5, this is the medium one and they also have a small one which is just under £4. Now this is not made in China but before you get excited Made in Pakistan. It does claim to be genuine leather. So as you can expect for a piece of leather from Pakistan that costs £5, it's not very good. It doesn't look pretty, it doesn't feel very nice, but it does protect the knife. It's not meant for this particular knife, it's just made for any traditional slip joint that you like. So it does house in there just fine and you've got a little a little grommelet or eye or whatever you want to call it. If you want to put a piece of paracord, a piece of leather or chain, you know, attach it to your belt. Um, I like that feature. But overall this sheath isn't very nice. In fact, just really quickly, I'll compare it to a nice one. Here's an English made one. This was about £30. You can see there you really do get what you pay for. You can see that this is... This is much nicer. I look forward to years and years of service from this little slip. This thing, well, it was less than five pounds, so I'm not going to cry over it. But it isn't very nice. I suppose it is good enough for a Rough Rider, though. Just in case anybody's curious, Victorian Knox Pioneer in there. Now then, speaking of other Rough Riders. I've got a handful of others to compare it to, if I can get the thing out, it is quite tight. I've only got two others here actually, the Rough Rider Camp Knife, which I have done a video on this before, and the Rough Rider Cotton Sampler. One thing I really will say about Rough Rider is they're not afraid to manufacture those rather unusual knives. And these unusual knives made by companies like Case seem to cost so much more than the rest of their knives. Is it one of these made by Case something like £150? Most of my Case knives are paid less than 90 In fact, I think the most I've paid for a Case is 89 And that is this one. The uh, Gunstock. Is that the proper name for it? Gunstock Jack or something? I keep forgetting. I've got that many knives. It's hard to be, hard to keep track of. Well, anyway, let's just let's just throw that in there anyway for the comparisons. Lighting's not that good. I'm sorry about that. What else could we do? Well, it'd be rude to not compare it to a Swiss Army knife. There's your Victorian Rox Spartan. And we'll also compare it to one of my favourites, one that I seem to gravitate a lot to for EDC, 
as the right shape's foot. You should have seen that coming, honestly. And I suppose we should show with the blades open. I'm sure that's important to a lot of people. I'm not going to do measurements. I can't really be bothered doing measurements, truth be told. And I don't think the exact millimetre really matters that much, unless we're talking about legality. But Heine does claim that this is UK legal. And I mean, there it is compared to a Spartan. That's UK legal. If I can just get my sheep's foot open. There we are. And just while we're here, some people are going to want to know, is that sheath any good for a sack? Well, you're not going to get anything bigger than a two layer in there, that's for sure. Arthur Wright, sheep's foot. Yeah, that's acceptable. A bit, a bit, a bit small for it. Anyway, that pretty much concludes this video. Hope you found that interesting. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you later.